Hey, welcome to Puget Sound Foursquare Church. Thank you so much for tuning in to our church at home service. My name is John, and today I'll be your host. Hey, stick around because we have Pastor Lance announcing our theme for this next coming year, as well as highlighting a few wins from 2020. You heard that right, we did have wins in 2020. As we get started, Pastor Laura and the Sound Worship Team will be leading us in a couple of songs of worship. Get your heart prepared to just sing and worship right where you are. Are you ready? Come on, worship team, we are ready for you.
go before and behind.
was your favorite song? If you're watching on Facebook, you can take a virtual poll down below and let us know what your favorite song was. If you're watching on YouTube or on our website, comment down below and let us know. Hey, before I turn it over to Pastor Heather for Kids Corner, would you do me a favor and click that like, follow, subscribe button? Want to take it a step further? Share this service for your, to your timeline for your community to see our church. You never know the lives that will be impacted by simply clicking that share button. Hey, speaking of sharing, I wanted to share a few events that are happening here within our church, and we'd love for you to come and be a part of it, or at least be in the know so that you can be praying with us. Hey, each year we partner with our clothing bank, Simple Love, to provide new socks, underwear, and pajamas for our community. If you want to partner with us in loving our community, you can do it one of two ways. The first is bring your new items the weekend of February 14th or the 21st and drop them at the booth in the lobby. We are specifically looking for toddler to high school sizes. The second way is to purchase an item or two from our Amazon wish list. These will come directly to the church. Hey, picture this with me. An assortment of cheeses, meats, nuts, jams, and fruits beautifully displayed on a board for you to enjoy with the one you love. Spend the afternoon learning to create beautiful masterpieces for you to enjoy that day and for dates to come. Save your seat today by registering on the Church Center app. You can choose to join us in person or on Zoom on Saturday, February 13th at 2 p.m. Hey men, we know we don't do good works to earn God's favor, but rather we do them as a result of God's favor. When the gospel has taken root in our lives, it produces the fruit of godliness, which stands in stark contrast to the darkness of the world, especially as we pass this legacy to future generations. Join us for this free six-week study on the book of Titus written by Chip Ingram beginning Thursday, February 11th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Sign up online or using the Church Center app. Hey, speaking of the Church Center app, or while you're on our website, Church, we really want to encourage you to tithe. Don't forget the statement that we said in 2020, flex your trust muscles and trust in God. Pastor Lance will be talking a little bit about tithing in his sermon today, so make sure you catch what he says. Whether it be on the app or through the mail, the church address will be right here. You can continue to help our church further advance the kingdom of God simply by your giving. All right, Pastor Heather, turning it over to you for Kids Corner in three, two, one. Hi kids, Pastor Heather here. Welcome to Kids Corner. Did you have a chance to watch last week's video called The Singer? If you didn't, that's okay. Just have your parents find the newsletter that I sent them and have them click on the link. This week's video is called The Captain of the Storm. Have you ever been to Wild Waves, or maybe even Great Wolf Lodge? They both have this huge pool that has gigantic waves in it. Now imagine, in the middle of all those waves is a man fast asleep on a floaty. Sounds pretty crazy, huh? That's exactly what Jesus' disciples thought about Jesus as he slept through a huge storm in the middle of the ocean. But Jesus had so much peace that he wasn't bothered. His disciples, though, were worried. All they could see was the trouble all around them. Sometimes life is hard and all we can see are the problems all around us. But remember, Jesus is with you. He hasn't left you all alone. He's your creator and he wants to see you safe and protected. So kids, can you do me a favor? Can you practice trusting Jesus? Next time you're scared or feeling fearful, will you take a moment to talk to God? He wants to give you joy and peace. Okay kids, that's all for today. I hope you have a great Sunday and that I get to see you all very soon. Bye-bye. All right, church. Pastor Lance is back and he's preaching the word of God today. Type family in the comment section down below because that's what we're doing today. The family meeting. And whether you type it or not, I just want to let you know that you're a part of this awesome family. Get your Bibles open, get your coffee, and ask God to move in your heart. Are you ready? All right, without further ado, here's Pastor Lance. Hey, good morning, Puget Sound Foursquare. Pastor Lance here. Hey, listen, if you're with us for the first time or the first time in a long time, welcome home. It's good to have you here. We're so excited to spend this time with you. Now listen, many of you have been joining us for our 21 United three weeks 
21 days of prayer and fasting. We've been reading our Bibles together, uh, praying together corporately and fasting. And boy, this last Friday night was an amazing time where we had reflect prayer. People shared testimonies. I'm telling you, uh, we will do that again because that was tremendous. Amazing time. But listen, people have been talking about a lot of what God's been doing through this fast. I want to help you just real quickly to learn how to come off a fast correctly. Too many times we just kick back into old habits. Remember, you entered into a spiritual journey, right? And when you enter into a spiritual journey, it would be silly for you to pick a fight with your flesh, win some spiritual battles, and then go right back to just giving in to your flesh. So let me help you. One of the things I came up with this years ago, it really helps in coming off of a fast. I wrote it. It's an acronym, LIVE, L-I-V-E, or LIVE, however you use it. But L-I-V-E. Uh, these four word letters uh, really equate to four words, and this will help you come off of a fast. So in order to really live well, you have to do this. First L, listen. You want to listen. In other words, quiet the noise in your life. Proverbs 8.32 says this, And now, O sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear my instruction. Be wise. And don't neglect it. Right. In other words, quiet the noise around you. Coming off of a fast, take some time to quiet the noise and hear what God said to you. Make sure you write it down. Because if you don't write it down, you'll forget it. Or the enemy will twist it. Right. L, I, is internalize. Begin to internalize what he said to you, right? In other words, how does this apply to your life? What are the things that you took from your time of prayer and fasting? Maybe you heard the Lord say to you in prayer or while reading your Bible or in a group that you've been in, you begin to internalize it. How does this fit in me? What do you want to say to me, Lord, about this? And then V, visualize, right? So, so you to live, listen, internalize, V, visualize. In other words, Begin to create a plan on how you're going to execute what God's been saying. In other words, the things he, maybe it's maybe it's that you keep on fasting some of those things. Some of you got rid of from some of your social media. Some of you got rid of sugar. Some I'm going to continue on in some of the fasting that I was doing because it really it's it's it, those are good great things habits and practices in my life that I think I'd like to continue on. V and then E exercise. In other words, you need to determine now how you're going to physically do that. In other words. If uh, the plan is to not get on socials or get on socials once a week or whatever your fast was, now you need to begin to determine how you're going to do that. In Ephesians 2.10, uh, we are your workmanship created in Christ for good works, which, is, which God prepared beforehand that he should walk in them. Right. So spend some time doing that. Learn to live and do it well. Otherwise, you'll just go back to doing what you've always done. All right. So let's not do that. All right. Here we go. But today as well. I want to remind you that this is what we call our family meeting 2021, right? Puget Sound Force where we have family meetings. You know, uh, before I get started into our family meeting, I just want to tell you one thing. I don't, I don't get to say this enough, but can I just say thank you? Thank you for trusting my voice in your life. Thank you for allowing my leadership over your families. Thank you for letting me pastor you. I think pastors, we just skip over that. And I just want to say thank you because it means a lot to me. It's an honor and a privilege to be called your pastor. You can listen to podcasts or watch videos until you're blue. But I'm just telling you, the fact that you allow me into your world, I, 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 it needs to be said. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me. Listen, 21 United finished. And every year we have our family meeting, right? And so our family meeting it basically suffices for our annual church business meeting, but you and I both know that the annual church business meeting of the past was usually done in July at 4 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon in a kid's classroom, sitting in kid's classroom chairs when the AC doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Usually there's a handful of people that show up to an annual business meeting at that time frame, and you know some of them are there because they're mad at you. Some of them are there because they want free snacks. Some of them are there because they want to actually be a part of the business meeting. Well, here in our church, um, I kind of took a page out of my personal family life. And with my kids, when they were growing up, we would make decisions as a family, whether we were sitting in the minivan or around the counter or around our dinner table. We would pause and say, hey, family meeting, this is how we're going to X, Y, Z. We just make up a decision. Sometimes it came down to camps. You know, are we going to do a football camp or a track camp or cheerleading camp or are we going to do a, a formal family camp or what are we going to do as a family this summer? What's it going to cost? And let's make the decision on how to do that, right? 
we got on the same page, not only us physically, but f spiritually and, and oftentimes fiscally to try to determine what, and you know, our family meetings included tears, in, included laughs, included uh, excitement and sometimes disappointment, right? And I'm just saying family meetings, but this one thing about family meetings that were so important, they were all bathed in relationship. That's why I call our annual business meeting a family meeting because it has to be bathed in relationship. If all we're doing is running a nonprofit organization, then I'm out. I don't want to do that. I want to be part of a family, right? So this is why we have a family meeting. And this is why I use our church services to do it because I want everyone here. I don't want some people here. I want our church here, right? So let me give you a couple of uh, uh, introductions perhaps of things or reminders for those of you who are part of the family. Puget Sound Foursquare has a mission, right? Did you know that every organization that's successful has a mission? Here's our mission, to send loved, mended, and trained people out. That's our mission, love, mend, train, send. It's our mission, it's what we do, it's what God put us on the planet to do, and we're gonna do that all the time, forever. And by the way, did you know churches oftentimes lose sight of their mission and think that their, their mission is to do this or that and they get off track. It's, it'd be like uh, going to Kentucky Fried Chicken and ordering spaghetti, right? The, the, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken is making some chicken, right? Or you go to Pizza Hut and order a salad, right? Now you can get a salad there, but if you're trying to get some good uh, healthy food, you might try somewhere else. I, I'm just saying, stay on the mission. And I will tell you this, after you hear our mission and what it's about, if this mission isn't the place for you, will you come talk to me? I want to help you find the church that fits the mission that God called you to. But conversely, if this is the mission that God called you to and this is your home church, then my expectation as your pastor is to get you included to the mission. To love you, mend you, train you, and send you. Right? Send you where? We'll, we'll send you to your home or send you to your school or to your work or to... Your, your, your family, I don't know, just to, to be sent as a missionary somewhere. Right? I believe that's what God's called us to do. Some people come to church because they want to go get another experience and have a, an emotional moment. At our church, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to mend you. See you get loved, mended, and trained, right? And not all me. It's going to be lots of people here at this church, plus the Holy Spirit doing it all. And we want to see you be released into ministry in the area that you're called to. Some here in this church, some outside of other churches and some other places in the world, as we want to see. What's our method? Our method, in other words, this is how you pull off or how you actually fulfill the mission. Here's how it is. You fulfill the mission by this, by showing up, syncing up, and serving. Show up, sync up, serve. If you show up, sync up, serve, can I tell you this? You will start fulfilling our mission, right? In other words, showing up is more than just attending. Showing up is like, you know, showing up, being there. It's like going to your kid's soccer game. You actually sit there in the soccer game and watch the game, or you sit there with your phone and don't pay attention. Man, show up to that soccer game because that little person's watching you, right? Show up, sync up. What does sync up mean? It means to get involved, be, roll up your sleeves, uh, be, be about it, right? Be, be uh, you know, people come to us and say, um, someone needs to put some liners in these garbage cans. Someone needs to clean up the whatevers. Can I tell you this? If you're part of this church, you are a someone. Right? So sync up, man. Be involved, right? Be a part of giving and serving, right? Show up, sync up, and serve. That's when you serve, right? That's when you're on a team and you're, you're part of the ministry doing something. Worship, kids, outreach, uh, preaching, teaching. I don't know. Just being a part of something, right? Show up, sync up, serve. When you do that, you will fulfill the mission of being loved, mended, trained, and sent. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Our church belongs to a family of other Foursquare churches, not only here in Washington, but all around the world, quite frankly. We belong to the Northwest, Northwest District, and our Northwest District is made up of over 200 plus churches from Washington, Idaho, Montana, and North Dakota, uh, with over a thousand licensed pastors, all within this region, quite a bit, right? My pastor, my boss, uh, is Pastor Dave Veach. He is an amazing man. I would... I would do anything for that man. He, he's an amazing um, leader, and I would follow him to almost anywhere. The guy is amazing. He has, he has spoke li he's spoken life to me. He has spoken challenges to me, and, and he's probably our church's biggest cheerleader. So I love that Dave Veach. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I serve under him as a superintendent, so I oversee 14 churches along with Mary Walsh. 
uh, and she's another pastor here in town over in Lakewood. And we work together to oversee 14 churches and six chaplains. Uh, we have a great time fulfilling our missions. We're excited about that. In 2020, we did some pretty wonderful things uh, out of our missions. We sent some people. We, we, kept, we, we, we gained some people. And what I, by that, I mean this. We send staff, right? So did you know that in 2020, a lot of people came to me and said, well, 2020 was such a horrible year. Churches did nothing but shut down. Not your church. Your church did some amazing things. Get this. Did you know that your church sent out two pastors to go be executive pastors out in Federal Way? You also sent two other pastors to go become lead pastors up in University Place all in 2020. You know what we did? We fulfilled our mission to love, mend, train, and send, right? Not only that, but we also have an opportunity to bring new people in. So Caleb and his fiance, um, uh, 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 Ashley, we had this opportunity to bring Caleb and Ashley in. And, and I'm telling you, so Caleb is our new youth pastor. We were able to, you see the picture on the screen there? He's an amazing man. Let me read a little bit about Caleb to you. As our new youth pastor, he was formally installed as the youth pastor on Wednesday evening. Caleb and his fiance Ashley um, have been serving in both kids and youth for several months now. Caleb has a bachelor's degree from UWT. Uh, most recently, he worked uh, providing support for families with youth and developmental disabilities. He has a heart for youth in Tacoma. He's had that for a super long time. Ashley's finishing up her student teaching and will be a support to Caleb with the youth. They'll be getting married here in five months. So be blessing them. Um, they're super, we are so blessed. We, we really are, I'm telling you. I was talking with Pastor John just about this the other day. He was bragging about the amazing people they were. And I said, man, what, what a gift we are given. Um, I feel like the caliber of people that are coming to our church over the years to be trained it's almost, I feel like we can learn so much from them in the process. And can I tell you this? They're not just coming to get trained from me. They're really coming to be trained by you, right? The Holy Spirit through you is going to be working in them as you serve on their teams. And there's so much they're going to learn from watching you. So be a part of their teams. Listen, there's so many wins that happened this last year. It would be, it would blur and get all fuzzy for me to just ramble them on. So I had a video made of a handful of the, of the beautiful things that happened. Why don't you join me in watching this video?
Wasn't that amazing? Man, I'm telling you, so loaded with so many wonderful things. It brought tears to my eyes thinking about all of the wins that happened in 2020. I want to share with you just real quickly a couple of the benefits that come along with being family. One of the things I used to say to my kids when we'd be driving in the car is I would tell them, um, isn't it great to be part of this family? Isn't, you know what? People would beg to be part of your family. This is part of our family. It's such a privilege to be a Powers in the Powers family. And I would say stuff like that all the time. They'd all roll their eyes and do what kids do. But can I tell you this? It's such a privilege to be part of Puget Sound Foursquare. I love this family, but with every... With every privilege comes responsibility, right? In other words, you can't just, like I said, decide someone needs to do something. You have to decide that if you're part of the family, you're a someone and you need to do something, right? You need to pick up a broom. You need to be a part of a solution to a problem. You need to give in an area that needs to be given to all of that. Speaking of giving, let me ask you this. Do you tithe? I don't know if you know what that is. I don't know who tithes in our church, but I can tell you that the tithes in our church are strong. But tithing isn't about money. Tithing is about trust. I believe that every person that calls themselves a Christian needs to tithe because tithing is about trusting. Tithing is about saying, God, I trust you with my resource. In other words, it's not mine. It's yours, right? It's the first 10% of your income. And you give that saying, Jesus, I trust you. And I trust with open uh, clarity what your church is going to be using that money for, paying off the debts of the building, uh, uh, to retire the debt of the building, paying off the lights and all the stuff that put money to mission, all the things that go on, right? That's super important. And, and what you saw in the video, if you want more information about any of those things, you come see me and I'll show you all the details because I'm so excited about what's happening. Listen, if you're not tithing, uh, you need to be a part of that tithing process. I wrote this down. If we can't trust God with our money, then how can we trust him with the rest of our lives, right? Could you imagine if everyone in our church gave the first 10% of their income because they actually trusted Jesus with their stuff. We, there's so much mission that can happen in Tacoma. We've had people knock on our church's office door and say, we need help for this, or we need to wish we could do that, or build the ramp for a wheelchair, do the this, or get a, fix the ambulance over across the world, or uh, help a pastor. I mean, you all the things that we could do, and oftentimes we're just limited to the budget we have. But I always think to myself, what would happen if everyone just said, Jesus, I trust you. I'm going to just trust you. Sometimes people say, well, you know, it's a difficult time, Pastor. I mean, you know, there's been a COVID. There's, there's been a pandemic. How do I trust God in that? Listen, I don't know a better time to trust God than in the time you need to trust God, right? Too many people think that I can only trust Jesus with my finances when everything is uh, overabundant. No, listen, you trust God when it's difficult because that's when you step in and say, Jesus, you're the one who's my king and my provider, the one that I live for and trust. I love this. A lot of times people who come to our church, did you know, by the way, it's interesting, our family meetings during this particular weekend, we always add numbers to our church. People always attend and they're like, hey, I like this church because they're not hiding anything, which is ironic because I don't think churches should hide anything. Nevertheless, I would say to you, if you don't know if this is your church and you want it to be, man, come. But if you're just coming to attend, you're missing it out. I need you to sync up, man. I need you to be involved. I need you to roll up your sleeves and join in and be a part of what's going on. And the closer we get to joining together and meeting together, man, we'll get to know each other a little bit more. And, and But as it is, uh, there's places to serve. There's ministries to get involved in. So be about that. Your church right now, uh, because we can't all meet together, but right now we, we live, our, our facility we're in is a 72,000 square foot, big old huge building in the middle of South Tacoma. We have 14 tenants. The remaining balance on our building, by the way, is about $3.3 million. That might sound like a lot, but we've retired quite a bit of the money of that. I mean, we're over halfway done of what we've been paying on this building. And I just dream of the day when all of our tenants can become all ministry opportunities because we've retired the debt in our building. I dream of that happening. Right? Wouldn't that be amazing that all 72,000, because right now the church really inhabits about 35,000, but we could use the whole building to be all ministry all the time. Could you imagine, uh, oh, I could just, I could tell you all the dreams I have about all the ministry we could put in the, all around the building. But listen, today's also the day that I want to launch our theme for this next year, 2021. During 2021, um, God gave us a, a, a theme for last year, for sure. This year, it's a different theme. This is a theme coming out of pandemic and being in the midst of pandemic and moving forward in pandemic. 
are coming out of 2020 into this, right? Let me tell you what our theme for this next year is. Have we prayed? We've talked to our staff. We talked to our council and we said, what is the theme? Here's what the Lord gave us for our theme for 2021. Are you ready for this? One word. The word is this, interrupted. Interrupted. That's the theme. In fact, it was interrupted with a tagline. Interrupted, a life-altering encounter with the Almighty. Interrupted, a life-altering encounter with the Almighty. I love this. I, I want to share with you, but you might say to yourself, like, weren't we interrupted before? Isn't this whole pandemic an interruption? Yeah, but let me tell you something. Do you realize that almost everyone, in fact, I couldn't find anyone in the Bible that didn't get interrupted by God and have a life-altering moment with Him at some point in their life? I mean, from, let me just read a couple of these things. These are people that we know of in the Bible who were living their lives, minding their own businesses for the most part, some of them doing crazy stuff and God capturing their hearts. But these are people who were interrupted by God somehow, some way, and had a life-altering moment, a life-altering change in their life. Listen to this, Noah. Remember Noah, Noah's Ark? Noah was interrupted by the Lord, and God, God asked him to build an ark, and he spent the rest of his life doing that and collecting a bunch of animals. Abram, or Abraham, he was interrupted in his life, and he, he literally uprooted his entire life, his livestock, his family, his kids, and took them to a land he did not know, the land of Canaan, that became the promised land. Moses had a comfortable, cushy life in Egypt until God interrupted him and asked him to free his people who'd been in slavery and bondage in Egypt. King David, right? He's writing songs and throwing rocks, man. He's just he's minding his own business, hanging out with a bunch of sheep until God interrupted little David's life and said, I want to make a king out of you, right? How about Mary? Remember Mary, Jesus' mom? She's busy trying to plan a wedding. She's doing everything she can to be sweet and figure out how to do this wife thing and all that stuff. And out of nowhere, an angel appears to her and says, greetings, favored woman, right? I got a, God's got a plan for you, right? He interrupted Mary's life, and you know what happened. Shows up in, in Bethlehem, right? How about Peter? He's out fishing one night, doesn't catch many fish, comes back, tries to clean the nets. I don't know what from, but he's cleaning his nets, repairing his nets, doing what he has to do. Jesus shows up on the Sea of Galilee and interrupts him, or on the banks of the Sea of Galilee, and interrupts him with three simple words. Peter, he says, come follow me, right? Jesus interrupted Peter's world, and he came and followed. How about Paul? Paul was on his way to, to, he had a letter in his hand to go persecute more Christians and see some get put to death. He was mean dude. Paul, the apostle who wrote three quarters of the Bible, uh, of the New Testament at least, and, and there's so much that Paul shows up and brings. Well, Paul was interrupted, knocked off his, his animal, whether it was a horse or a donkey, we don't know. could have been a camel, but he was knocked off, and literally his life was interrupted and he was turned completely upside down to where eventually not only did he not persecute the church he gave his life for a persecuted church how about matthew he was a tax collector one day interrupted luke dr luke he was he was spending time binding up the broken and the hurting and his life was interrupted how about john he was interrupted in a vision while on the island of patmos and wrote the book of revelation i could go on and on and on these life altering encounters with almighty god I am believing for you, this is, I'm so excited, in 2021, that you and I will have a life-altering moment with him. A life-altering moment that he'll say, listen, I've got you, and I'm bringing you to a place you did not know. Just like David, just like Noah, just like Paul, just like Peter, just like Mary, I'm telling you, just like Martha. I mean, you go over and over in the Bible, and you see these life-altering moments in time. I want to tell you already in 2021, there's already, our church has already experienced um, a life-altering moment, two of them, that I want to share with you right at the beginning of this family meeting. Let me tell you this, two things have already showed up on, this, on our radar screen heading into 2021. The first is this, I was out uh, mowing my lawn in June, this last June 2020, and I had some people, um, my neighbors came up to me, I live out on Fox Island, came up to me and said, hey pastor, um, we know you're a pastor, would you ever want to start a church out here on Fox Island? Well, I was busy weeding and mowing my lawn. The next thing I know, long story short, a bunch of months later, a lot of planning later, we're getting ready to launch our Fox Island campus right here on February 14th. So literally just a couple of weeks from now on a Zoom platform that we're going to launch a Zoom campus on Sunday evenings at 5 o'clock on Fox Island, our Fox Island church campus. Go figure that. It's going to be amazing, right? That was the first interruption. Interruption number two is this. 
Many of you know Trinity Church over by the mall. It's the one with the big sign over by REI that says, Jesus cares for you. People call it the Jesus cares for you church, or it used to be called the Christ is the answer church. That one over there, remember that one? Well, three months ago or so, um, we found out that one of the, that the senior pastor ended up feeling the Lord leading to leave their church, and they've been in the middle of a pastor search. One of their pastors called, he's a good friend of uh, Pastor Dave and Pastor Heather, and asked if he could talk with them about the idea of joining Foursquare, or being part of Foursquare. Now, you know Trinity Church because we've done outreaches with them, right, for the last, I want to say, 10 to 13 years. Just outreaches, our back-to-school jam. We spent a lot of time doing ministry, same theology, uh, same uh, passion, same uh, doctrine. Just, there's so much about them that we're like, anyway, the conversation showed up about joining our two churches together in one, becoming one church, right? Where, where, we'll be, uh, where, where I would become the senior pastor of that church and this church and eventually become the senior pastor of both churches, right? So we've entered into the conversation. In fact, right now, get this. They're over at their church right now, Sunday morning, talking to their church about joining with us to become one church, with me being the pastor of both. So can we just pause for a second and pray for them, as many of them are hearing for this the first time, just like you. So Jesus, we ask right now that you be with the family of Trinity, and we ask that you just be with them, give them wisdom and insight and passion and willingness and faith to step into a joining together of two churches to become one. Lord, I truly believe we're going to be better together. Thank you so much for what you're doing. We trust you in Jesus' name. Now, the beautiful thing is my pastor, Dave Veach, um, our church council, a four-square denomination, their church elder board, all of them feel a yes and amen on moving forward. We actually hired some outside, an outside consultant um, that would come to make sure we didn't miss any steps because you've seen some churches that have missed a step or two. Well, this guy is all about the details and he's helping us walk through some of this stuff. And we believe we are going to be better together. Now, there's so many questions. We call them frequently asked questions or FAQs that, that you're going to ask. Well, where will we end up? Which building? And who will do this? And who will do that? And all of that stuff. There's lots of questions. Well, we created Pastor Heather, sat down with their elder board, and came up with a list of frequently asked questions. And we have actually posted them on the website. You can go look at it right now. If you go to the, um, the tab, the teaching tab, or the weekend services tab, and you click on it, there will be a button under there, a, a drop-down menu that says Better Together. There you go. It's kind of quippy. Better Together. Click on that, and you'll see the FAQ sheet with all of the facts as to what we can expect. Now, we don't have all the answers. We have a, we have a lot of them, and we're moving forward. This has been going on now for, like I said, about three months, and we're so excited. But this was an interruption. Literally, this was one of those moments that was a life-altering encounter with God, where God's going to bring us together so that we can reach Tacoma in a really unique and special way. I love the fact that we get to be on mission as one church in Tacoma. And you watch and see what God's going to do in you and in us and in them together. It's going to be amazing. Listen, we are getting ready to launch into 2021 Interrupted. My prayer for you is that you yourself would be willing to accept a life-altering interruption from him. And I'm telling you, it might not be fun. I don't think Paul had a great time being knocked off a horse. I don't think Peter felt good about leaving his dad and his brothers. I, I don't know if it was easy for anybody to experience a life-altering interruption. But oftentimes, God uses those moments to speak to us in those times more than ever, right? Will you join me as we pray this morning? And asking God to make room in your life for an interruption that's really driven by his hand. So Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for a family meeting fraught and full with all sorts of beautifully wonderful things. Especially in light of a year that seems so, so confusing and blurry with all of the things. Today we come and we say, Jesus, have your way in us. Go ahead right now. Can you just say that? Say, Jesus, have your way in me. Say it again. Jesus, have your way in me. Lord, just interrupt us. We, we want a life-altering moment and encounter with you this year. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Listen, I love you. Be excited and be ready. We'll talk with you soon. God bless you. Church, aren't you excited? 
Give me one thing that you're excited about with everything that 2021 has in store in the comment section down below. Pastor Lance highlighted some wins, but he also helped us look to the future. Let me ask you a question. How will you allow God to interrupt your life? Hey, before we go, I want to remind you that you can find all the information on our website, www.pugetstownfoursquare.com, on the Church Center app, or on our socials at Sound Foursquare. Get familiar with what's happening, stay committed, and continue to fix your eyes upon Jesus. Just a friendly reminder that if you're meeting with us online, that we'll be here at 10 a.m., but we are meeting in person at church at 9 and 11. Can't wait to be with everyone again next week. Be safe, take care, and we love you, church.